So, Jay, who's this guy in our studio today? It's a good friend of mine, Chris Kirkpatrick. <laughs> Some random guy. He found me on the corner of the street. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's a world famous YouTuber with Life 180. He's the hey. CEO and founder. Awesome. Hey. Appreciate you yeah. uh, coming and joining us no, today. No, it's it's awesome. I'm excited to be here. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I, uh, I think we're going to have some fun conversations. So it's been well, fun already. Yeah, it certainly has. Well, we spent the last hour already talking yep. about what we were going to talk about and totally having a to- good time. But yeah, why absolutely. don't you tell us more about yourself, Chris? What uh, yeah. what what brought you to this place of being an awesome YouTuber <laughs> uh, and well, founder and CEO of Life 180? That's a loaded one. So I honestly. <laughs> um, like everything else in my life, I, I feel like the YouTube stuff I've just figured out just trying to do it for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I did a lot of work when I first got into the kind of entrepreneurial space working with a guy named Brennan Burchard. I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he's phenomenal. And, and he kind of has this mindset that really aligned with me is like, before you hire anybody to do anything, you better learn how to do it yourself. Otherwise, you're going to get taken advantage of. That's right. Time, right. And right. so... So I learned, I learned how to get into YouTube. I just started making videos um, and you know, you fail forward like everything else mm. in life, right? And mm-hmm. so um, I, I just kind of slowly learned what I was doing and you know, you do something long enough, poorly enough, you get good at it. And, uh, and, <laughs> but I'd say you've you know, gotten well, pretty good at it. Yeah, you know, it, it, yeah, like, I mean, listen, it's, it's, been, it's been awesome. The, the channel's been a blessing. It, it's, uh, you know, we get a lot of views. Uh, we, we get a lot of, clients and leads and stuff out of it but you know like it's it's a cool because youtube's a fun platform because we mm-hmm. can we can serve people we can get good content out out there in the world uh really help educate people really help them solve their problems i'm you know my channel is all about money and that's why i think this conversation is gonna be a it's lot of fun perfect. for you guys yeah, it's yeah. perfect um, you know and so i talk a lot about that helping people reg- regain control of their financial lives or gain control for the first time in their life of their finances yeah, yeah. which is typically the case honestly and so um, you know, we do that. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's not like the sexiest of topics, right? Like, but the bottom line is if we think about YouTube and, and one of the reasons, if it's worth doing, I saw a sign somewhere around here. It's like, that made me think about this quote. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly until you're good at it. That's like one of the, the mm-hmm. quotes that I kind of live my life by, right? And, mm-hmm. and so from that perspective, I was like, Jay, we nailed that. When you, we started this, uh, this you we started this <laughs> channel so, uh, and our videos. That's awesome. I don't, I don't know, Chris, if you've seen our our early early videos and Sean, watch Sean behind the camera. There, you, you'll get a you get a kick out of it. But that's uh, awesome. Uh, they're they're bad. I mean, we're bad? oh yeah. We're, I, I don't oh, know. Yeah. Mine might be worse. I remember. So check this out. Check this out. I, my wife this will tell bad. you this. So so I remember the first YouTube video I ever made, and it wasn't even really designed for YouTube. I it was when I launched Life 180 in 2014. I had to film a video and I was so bad at it. My, my, we had a video guy come in and luckily we had this office space in a big building and there was a guy who did video production like five doors down from us, right? And so he comes in and he sets up in our conference room and he starts filming me and he's like, I got this whole thing scripted out. We got a big flip chart and I've got oh it all bullet gosh. pointed. I'm ready to roll. <laughs> like I, I feel, but like, and listen, I'm pretty good with people. I'm good like, you know, conversationally like this, but I'd never done video before. And for yeah. those who don't understand what I'm talking about, like doing one-to-one conversations across the table and doing a video, completely different thing, yeah. right? And so I'm like, all right, so I get up there. No joke, my wife will attest to this when you talk, ask her, you'll laugh, I will. you'll laugh. It took me a day and a half to film a two minute and 42 second video. <laughs> a day and look at you and now. a half. Look at you like now to film a forty, 40. a two minute and forty two second video, and so yeah. like, and it was horrible. I look back at it now, and it's like cringe worthy, like <laughs> it's cringy. <laughs> like, luckily, the guy who did the editing like did a pretty good job, right? And the and the animation, the motion graphics, and stuff like that kind of make up for my complete awkwardness and like you know whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing what you can do. So it's like an production. intro type video. Yeah, it was thing? like okay. it was like, like when you business. landed on our website. Like, here's the video about what is Life 180. You know That's that kind of awesome. thing. Awesome. And I was to- it was totally horrible, but. You know, is that, that the one that's still there? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that would be. What awesome. are no, 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 no. I want to watch it now. <laughs> no, no, because I think I saw. The, I, I, it's really good. What's up there now? Oh, I'm just thank curious you. if that's. Yeah, no, 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 no. This has been down for a long time. Okay. But the, uh, <laughs> but, but I still have it on the YouTube channel. Okay. And it's just you got to go way back in the in the search. You know, history. Ours, you don't have to go that far back. Yeah. yeah. And if you want well, a really nine, good laugh, nineteen videos. I think I have over eight hundred videos on my channel now. Horrible lighting. So. It's, wow. it's a lot, you know, yeah. but 
But so commitment. So you committed yeah. to the channel. Well, and so here's the deal. Like I, I looked at it back then. And so YouTube, um, at, when I started, uh, wasn't even owned by Google yet. Right. Don't forget. And so, yeah. And so, it, but I knew like it was taking off. Like it was very obvious. The world was moving to video. Yeah. And I think it was like, I got to get ahead of this. You know, this is where people are going. Yeah, I don't know if you remember a thing called Periscope. Uh, oh yeah, but Periscope yeah. came out was the first live streaming, mm -hmm. uh, and that got sketchy. It, it, well, it did, but like, so here's the deal: I was so bad at doing YouTube, but I knew video was the future. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first started doing video about money, all these people coming from the people that I had at the corporate job, you know, the relationships that I had in the industry, uh, you know, because I had had a lot of success in the insurance business. Mm -hmm. And so I had a lot of relationships with a lot of successful people that have been doing it for a long time. And they're like, Chris, you're crazy. Nobody's ever gonna watch a YouTube video and then call you and work with you <laughs> and do all this. You're insane if you think people are gonna watch you randomly and call you from some random state, other place in the country and wanna work with you. That's not how this world works. I was like, well, we'll try anyway. You know, like I think, cause one way or the other, I, I just knew that if I could just get this information out there, it would be valuable. And, mm -hmm. and then Google buys YouTube in the middle of it all, you know, and so YouTube obviously went through some transitions or whatever. But if you think about it now, like if you look at the world that we live in today, and I knew this back then, but especially now, you, Google is the number one search engine in the world, mm -hmm. right? YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. Do you yeah. know that? It's because it's number, a library of content. I think people I go back to it. it yeah. is, they it go back to it and search two. for... Exactly. Yeah. A lot of people think of YouTube as a social media site, but it's cool because it's a social media site combined with a search engine. And it's mm -hmm. honestly, it's the number two search engine in the world. Yep. And if you think about it, it's become kind of like Kleenex in the world of like, you know, you, you, you go, I need to learn how to something. I'm going to YouTube it. How to do it. Yeah. Right? How, how to. How to. I learned how, I learned to, how, how to sweat to. copper pipe. YouTube. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I learned how to... school of... Anytime, so I'm the least mechanically person, <laughs> like mechanically inclined person you'll ever meet in your life. My my wife still picks on me because I built an IKEA shelf and it's like tilted. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how bad I am, right? And so, so and I so want to see goes, that too. <laughs> she goes, she goes. The only thing you're good with is your phone, but luckily you're really good with your phone, you know. So, <laughs> so I'm not good with 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 stuff, but like I have a Jeep and I love my Jeep and and like I, as horrible as I am, like. I've installed like running lights in a, in a cage and, you know, running boards and a, a lift and all these different things. And I've yeah. done it all through YouTube, like watching yep. Yep. YouTube that's videos. That's incredible. Yep. Right? Yeah, and, that's yeah. incredible. And, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, it's funny because I hate doing things with my hands, like unless it's typing. You know, like I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a physical work kind of guy. And, and I, but for some reason, I love, you know, doing that. And, but YouTube is how I did it. And so, if you think about it, you can, you, anybody can create, and I believe anybody, sh everybody should create a YouTube channel, you know, like mm -hmm. just cause. And so, uh, but it's hard and it takes, well, it takes the, yeah. and this is why we're excited to have right, you here because Jay go. and I, it's going to be fun, you know, cause Jay and I are, are, are trying to build our channel, yeah. you know, and we know that, that a lot of people in our industry, loan officers, real estate agents mm -hmm. could seriously benefit as well from, mm -hmm. from building up a, a, um, not just a social media presence, but, but a YouTube, a video presence like that. Yeah. And so. That's why we we want to learn from that as much as we can from from sure. here. I mean, Chris has for our listeners who don't know, he's seventeen twenty thousand. Yeah, we're almost at eighteen thousand now. Okay, you know, okay. which is interesting because like you got YouTubers with millions of people, right? Like Mr. Yeah. Beast got a hundred million on like two different channels and yeah. twenty million on another one. Like he's like whatever. So the idea of like. Like it's not a lot, but, but in this have, industry, yes, no, I was going to say in the financial industry, yeah, yeah, to yeah. have that many subscribers on any one particular you totally YouTube channel, you've reached a position of influence, and and very obviously influential. Yeah. we can learn from how you got there. Totally, and and what I'll say is this: is that YouTube. A lot of people look at YouTube as like, are you monetizing? And you know how? Mm -hmm. What what are you what are you earning from like ad revenue on your channel? And that's how YouTubers, the the pure creators, look at it. I look at it, so I call it your authority platform, right? And so if we think about it, if you're a real estate agent, mortgage broker, life insurance agent, financial advisor, anybody that's in that kind of services-based industry, right? Mm -hmm. I believe everybody should have their own authority platform because it was a decade ago or before, nobody would, you, the, the whole way you would do your business is you'd go to chamber events, you'd go to networking events, yep. you'd, yep. you know, yeah. 
you join a BNI or do something <laughs> yep, like that, exactly. right? Yep, and you do yeah. your thing. And you'd, you'd build this little sphere of influence and you'd try to network inside of that and you'd get referrals and like all these things. And it makes me want to vomit. But like, <laughs> I, you know, like, I love it. That is, that is like, I, oh gosh, I wouldn't be in this business still if I had to do that. Like, mm. here's the deal. Like, at this point in time, especially in COVID, just catapulted this into the future. It, it took uh, what was going to take the next 10 years and it made it happen in two. Right. Mm -hmm. People now, I can tell you this because I was here before it happened and I'm here now. And I could tell you where I had to convince people to hop on a Zoom with me now. Now nobody wants to meet me in person. Yeah. Like this is one of the first times I've come in person and done an interview like this. You were pretty excited you know, about it. I was. Really? I was jacked. Oh, I'm like, sweet. I get to get out of my house. I got to put pants on, honey. I gotta, <laughs> honey, oh, do I have what pants? Do? <laughs> do I, do I? <laughs> John's sick of watching me run around in my underwear. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. But like, so. So like I, I, I came up with this thing when COVID happened and I kind of got into the, I saw an opportunity and I was like, listen, everybody needs to build their authority platform because it used to be people, when we think about what we're doing to build our businesses, and I think we talked about this a little bit at lunch, is like we have to enter the conversation going on inside of the minds of the people that we're trying to serve yeah. and sell to and market to and all these different things. And I would argue if you're not serving them by marketing and selling them, you're doing the wrong thing. Like you better believe so much in what you do that not sharing it with them, not trying to sell them, sell them or market to them doing is them. doing them a disservice, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Like you got to believe in your stuff so deeply that that's the case. And if, if you are watching this video and you're saying that's not you, well then do something else. Like I, I believe mm -hmm. very, very strongly in that. Um, and so with that said though, if that is you, if you do fall into that, I would also call you to action and say that you have a responsibility like you guys. I'll just talk to you. We appreciate that. You Thank guys, you. I mean, and you're doing it, right? You have a responsibility to take what you've learned and the information that you have to be able to serve people mm -hmm. and pay it forward to be able to help people reach their goals, you know? And how are you going to do that? Like you have to build a YouTube channel. You have to build a sales funnel. You have to have different hooks and different ways to connect with people and their personalities and the technical things help them solve their problems. And you got to have a system and a path and a way to communicate. And like, I call that your authority platform, you know, mm -hmm. all those things together, your YouTube channel, your Instagram, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, uh, all your social platforms, what, what they all have to go somewhere you have to have a path you have to have a you know like a value ladder is is what we call it in marketing terms right where mm -hmm. you know the 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 bottom of the value ladder is like a bunch of hooks a bunch of like little videos you know or, or whatever that that are adding value into people's life and then as people watch those videos as people watch your content uh get into programs that you would have depending on you know what anybody who's watching this video does but ultimately what is your guys goal for the people that you work with it's it's to help them get a mortgage to get a dream home to take that next step it's, in life it's home ownership it's financial yeah. goals yeah it's, yeah all and to have above. peace of mind peace of mind mm -hmm. in stability that, right Absolutely. peace of mind stability trust and to have knowing exactly, that was what i was going with it is to actually have somebody that yeah. they know that they can count on totally. that's going to be absolutely yeah. transparent with yeah. them and honest and get them to the finish line right answer the phone yeah and so here's be the responsible cool part. Right. <laughs> So Bad news when it's needed. Here's the cool part, right? <laughs> so you guys have done this on a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one basis for years. Yeah. Fair enough? Yep. So, okay, so you're really good at that. It goes back to me being really good one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one with people and being horrible on video, right? You got the one-to-one -one down. I would argue that you have the information that you need. You have a responsibility to get it out there to the masses. Now, are you going to work with every single person that watches your videos? No. Hmm. But it's not about that. It can't be about that. Like you can't go into relationships and to conversations with people with any of that conversation being about you, right? It's gotta always be about them. right? And you have to help identify their challenges, identify the problems that they have in their life, their hangups. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're emotional, sometimes they're technical, sometimes they have bigger gaps because they have debt and credit issues or whatever. Mm -hmm but make no mistake about it. That's an emotional thing, right? Yeah. Like you got to help them kind of navigate that. They have fear, they have self-limiting beliefs, they have all these things that are happening. So 
I mean, I've never been a mortgage person, but I just know like you guys are more counselors than anything else in a lot of circumstances. It is a, a, it is a magical thing when they when borrowers do come to our yeah. office and we get to sit down with them and have this one on one time with them, and the the walls really come down. We're able yeah. to we're able to get below the surface and understand yeah. what they're really about. What are they What are they trying to accomplish and and help them get there and and put this plan together for them. It's really awesome. It's amazing. I love it. So so I, I would just say you know you guys have that heart of service. You have that desire to help people solve these problems. You know, you don't sell mortgages, you solve problems. That's what you do. And I, you know, whether you're a real estate agent, life insurance agent, mortgage broker, I would encourage every one of you to stop identifying as that and start identifying as a problem solver. Like period, that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, don't make it more complicated than that. <laughs> Professional because, problem solver. Yeah, because solver. if you, if you and, and <laughs> you gotta it. know how you solve their problems, but be, that yeah. think about it, it, it helps you connect with people way better. It's and, and, and if you're doing one to one conversations or if you're creating videos, mm -hmm. you just understand that how you're communicating with people, that the way you show up in people's lives, the way you ask questions, you're not being like, hey, you looking to buy a house? I got a mortgage for you. You know, it's right. like just talk to people, have yeah. authentic, genuine conversations, care like I got mm -hmm. like if you're going to be able to identify challenges, you better get really good at asking good questions. So Brian and I were just talking about this this morning, actually, awesome. about how, you know, sometimes um, with when it comes to anything financial, financial services related, whether yeah. it's life insurance or it's insurance policies in general, yeah. mortgages, anything, yeah. people don't really e want to even think about it mm -hmm. until they have to think about it. Right. Mm. And so how do you stay in front of the conversation before it needs <laughs> to happen. That's a great well, question. oh yeah, that's a good question. So, so but that's okay. where this comes in. Yeah, being able to inform on a regular basis. And, oh, it's yep. it's so powerful. So think about it this way: nobody wants to be sold to, but everybody wants to buy, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. everybody, so true. They know they need the mortgage. They know they need life insurance. They know they want to get a house, but they don't want to be sold to buy a bunch of real estate agents that why they should work with them. They don't want to be sold why you're the best mortgage person. They don't want to be sold why my company is the best life insurance company. Like they don't want to have those conversations. What they want to be able to do is be able to be uh, an educated consumer to be able to uh, evaluate content and information. Well, let's just call content just information in whatever media it just happens to be me uh, video is mm -hmm. the most desired media at this point in time. So they want to be an educated consumer, consume the information that they want so they can make an educated, informed decision with them and their spouse, mm -hmm. period, right? What's the best way to do that? You're not gonna be able to do that one-to-one -one, or it's not scalable and it's you're probably gonna have a hard time at this day and age to do that. Right. By going online and having a YouTube channel and social media and stuff, you can just have your authority platform so anytime anybody wants to see anything, even if you talk to somebody, it's just like, hey, go check this out. Now you don't have to make the clothes, you know, you, you get to do it. Now I'll tell you this, my YouTube channel, like I don't, for for six years, I, I had nothing to sell anybody and I would have 30 people a week call me and ask me to help them. Hmm. And I couldn't sell them anything. Oh my gosh. Right? Yeah. Okay. It's, so what did you do? I just gave them to other people for for years and finally this year we created something so now yeah. we have something going on that's official but which is amazing um but like it just goes to show if you you don't have to sell you don't have to have i mean yeah does it help to have the right clear call to action mm. if it makes sense and if it's authentic and it, then yes absolutely but it's really just about serving people and if you get your message right and you know who you're speaking to and you're solving their problems and you're helping add value to their life It'll all work out. You just got to be willing to be bad to be good, and you got to be consistent. And and it's the compound effect. We all we all know. Like everybody thinks about compounding money, right? Yep. Okay, so compound the hockey stick concept, right? Is like you earn whatever percent, and it compounds every. It, well, you know the penny a day doubled concept. You yep. guys familiar yep. with yep. that? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. So so you go for those who are not familiar with it. We'll just talk about it for a second. So the <laughs> the concept of penny a day doubles. You go to most people and you say, I could give you a penny today. Uh, or a, a penny a day doubled or a million dollars today, what are you going to take? And most people would say a million dollars because they don't understand compounding. They don't like whatever. Yep. The reality is a penny 31 days from now is worth 10.3 million if you double it every day. Now, <laughs> if you went 27 days in, it's not worth the million dollars yet, right? It's not like you're still way ahead if you took the million. 
But if you just if you just give it enough time, three more just days. keep holding on. That's the whole two feet from gold concept, right? It's like yeah. you're almost there, don't stop. And so if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly until you're good at it. And you just gotta be consistent. You gotta take advantage of compounding and people don't realize that compounding operates in our business the same way that it works with money, mm -hmm. period. Like I worked building my channel for two years before I saw any results. And then I started seeing some uptick. And I'll tell you, finally six years in, a hockey stick. So how many videos would you say you had published up until that time in the first two years? Uh, 300. That's a lot. Okay. That's a <laughs> lot. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a lot. Is it worth it? I can tell you now though, between everything that's ever come through my channel, the money that I, uh, the, the leads that I gave to other companies and the, com the leads that have come through us and other partnerships and stuff mm -hmm. between life insurance and other things that we've done. The channel's done over 4 million in revenue. That's probably incredible. from that stuff alone. That's incredible. Right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, like, and I'm sure that just the goodwill of, of having given these prospects to others to actually yeah. convert it has oh, totally. absolutely oh, come yeah. back to you in other ways. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's definitely, yeah. you know, you pay it forward. Like, and, 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 but that's the thing is like, yeah, you know, we were talking about this at lunch. I get, I'll go here now. Is is if you want to if you want to be successful doing any of this, is you got to find. I, I I just did a video on this. It's like there's four steps of success. It's the first step is find people who are on your path, right? Because people make decisions emotionally. They validate those decisions with logic. You are where you are. Hopefully, 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 you're a mortgage person. You're a real estate person. You're a life insurance person. You're whatever services person you are because you have an emotional connection with it, right? It's yeah. not just about you making money, mm -hmm. right? Correct. 100%. So if that's the case, I'm going to challenge you to really think about like why you're doing it and what was that emotional reason because you made that decision. Now here's the challenge, and this is just human nature. This is natural for everybody. I went through this process. You mm -hmm. probably did. You probably did. Like most people do. Most people have to struggle a little bit till they figure this out. But the bottom line is we made an emotional decision. And then what happens is we want to validate our emotions with logic, right? Mm -hmm. And so what mm -hmm. do we do? We go learn deeper. We try to like understand and make sure we made the right emotional decision, right? So for me, yeah. I learned about the life insurance stuff. I learned about the money. I learned, to, okay, I got excited about it, solved my problems. I go into, I learn all the technicals. I read 30 books on it. I spend 10,000 hours mastering it, becoming an expert. And now all of a sudden, and I did this, by the way, I became so excited about the, technicals and the logic and the math and all that stuff that I was like, oh my gosh, everybody needs to know this. So I just started doing content on all the math and all the logic <laughs> and all the all stuff. All the stuff that you got excited and about. And you know what happened? <laughs> Nothing. No. Nobody cared. <laughs> Nobody cared. So, so and, and, and that's the same in every business, mm -hmm. you know? You gotta connect with people emotionally. You gotta understand what are the emotional hangups that they have so you can help them solve those, yeah. right? Yep. And, and, and once you do that, you're gonna see like the whole sky open up. You know what I mean? And so when you find people who are on the same path as you, this is where it makes it awesome because you can lead with story. You can be authentic. You could talk about your story, share, and you don't have to sell hardcore. And then if you add an authority platform on the back of it and you have a YouTube channel, when you start sharing, you don't have to like try to hard close them and set up an appointment. Yeah. You just let them know, hey, I got this channel. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on YouTube. Do this, do that, follow me on LinkedIn. What, what platform are you on? Like, just go there, I'm there, check it out. Connect with me, like whatever. So if you do that and you say, okay, I'm gonna find people around my path because I know those are the people that I can speak to. One of the biggest things that people think about with uh, miss or, or misunderstand about any of this stuff is that I have to be an expert, right? Like mm -hmm. I have to be the best of the best of the best. So probably what stops people, keeps people oh, from I'm turning sure. the cameras on in the first place. Totally, it's the number one killer of success <clears throat> in the world. And if I, ha if, I, if I look at one thing that I was blessed with and gifted with, mm -hmm. it's not that I'm talented, it's not that any, it's that I, I, I was given a gene that never turned on about caring about looking bad like i just <laughs> that I is a great quality i don't care you know <laughs> like that. so we were, we were talking about that too right like you finally yeah. get to a point in your life where you're just like you know what whatever like yeah. i don't really i really don't care like, totally yeah you totally. know what people think of you know how i looked that day or what you know whatever you know 100%. you just have to get over it yep and so 
So what I, if, if you, if you understand that you got into the business for the reason you find people on your path, you can speak to it authentically. You can go down that path and now you get to share your story because guess what? You're, you only have to be six months ahead of them. You know, your best client mm -hmm. is somebody who is who you were six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, like whatever it is, you can relate to them because yeah. now you can speak to them and you, you can, you know, like me, I'm married. I got three kids. I, there's all sorts of things that go along with that. Right. Like, mm -hmm. so I, I want to, I want to find people who are on my path. That's why I went to an event called Funnel Hacking Live, right? And there's 5,000 entrepreneurs, people there, uh, entrepreneurs there that are on fire. They don't all do the same business as I do. Okay. But they're, I, I mean, if you were to look around the audience, most of them are between 25 and 45. Yep. A lot of families, you know, some obviously not like entrepreneurs, what are younger, but a lot of families, a lot of, you know, people that are fitting kind of like who I am. We do different things. But our hearts and our minds and our goals and our missions to impact the world doing our own unique thing was the same. Yeah. But I know I do money. So what do they do? They, everybody needs money. Everybody needs a better relationship with money. So I, going in and just connecting with them and being able to serve them and like whatever. I, I like that, actually. I like what you just said. What did I that say? That everybody <laughs> needs a better relationship with money. Yeah. Like that's profound. It's And it's so true. Like so many people are so lost. Oh gosh, with so, their relationship with money. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna sidetrack from what I was talking about. I gotta <laughs> no, go here now. I, I, I did it. Go I did now. it to you. you, you so. It to so so check this out. So I always say this, and, and this is what I love. This is what. And I was I'm writing my new book, and I, I actually got done writing this last night. And and so this section of the book last night. How many I hours think, a day do you work? A lot. I'm just gonna. A lot. <laughs> but I like like I don't. <laughs> it's work. awesome. I don't work. But like that's a, the it's, thing. It's, it's like a love. I, it's a I woke up at four o'clock yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Like I never set an alarm clock. I woke up at four o nine yesterday. I woke up at four fifty one today. Yeah. Like I just like whatever my body does, and I just I I'm I'm excited every time. Let's go. Oh, when it's a labor so, of love. Yeah. And so so check this out though. Let's let's go here. I believe if I were to ask you, I'm not even gonna. I want to ask you guys. What are the four most important things in your life? And then I'll, I'll probably challenge you a little bit. God, wife, kids, company. Okay. Same. Okay. So I broke it down a little differently. It's very similar. Faith. I love acronyms, by the way, so you'll okay. understand. <laughs> Faith, family, fitness, finances. Fitness is a good one. Fitness That's good. is just because I wanted four Fs. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, but, no, no, but no, no, it's no, really but, helped. No, but fitness, really helped. fitness is integral to your ultimate success, so right. keeping a healthy body. It's health. Yeah. I, 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 and I kind of jabbed at myself in the book but it's like <laughs> i really it should be fffhf but it's ffff you know like I, whatever but okay. but faith family fitness finances and if you think about it can you outsource your success in your faith and, nope. and no. be successful no nope. can you outsource your success as a spouse and a father no nope. nope. no can you outsource your success with your fitness with your health nope, nope. no so how in the world have have we now we get to the finances. Most of America is outsourcing, trying to outsource their success, and it's no wonder 95% of hmm. people are failing. Think about that. That's I'm, interesting. I'm thinking about, I'm digesting I mean, I'm right sitting here thinking to myself, I'm, I'm yeah, not a financial really... expert, so I'd rather have somebody who knows more than I. I understand. Helping me manage my. Okay. I'm, oh, this is gonna be fun. Um, yeah, so just, <laughs> you can, I, I can just I, see him blowing holes I, in that right now. I, I, well, so, <laughs> so think about this. So, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what we've been programmed to think, okay? Okay. I'm gonna challenge everybody, because listen, you guys and me, we're way ahead of where most people are in life. Fair enough? Fair. For, for most Americans, right? Fair. There are people who are plenty further ahead than we are, yes, yes, right? Definitely. For sure. Yep. And that's like, so I'm not saying that egotistically or arrogantly. Mm -hmm. It's just like, we're all on a journey. My journey is different than your guys, right? Like everybody's on their own journey, but the bottom line is you are where you are in life because of who you are in life, period. And if we know that money is one of the four most important things in our life and we can't outsource the success in the most important things and that I would argue that money and our relationship with money and who we are with money and how we handle money has a direct impact to how we show up with our faith and how we can give back to community and church and tithing and, and organizations that we want to support and missions and stuff mm -hmm. of that nature. It shows up very obviously in the fact that most divorces are caused by financial stress mm -hmm. and kids being able to 
like just money, money, mm-hmm. money, oh, yep, yep, money yep. has an impact. Mm-hmm. You, health, fitness, stress around money is the number one common stress in the world. Stress is the greatest cause of disease. So I would argue that you not only should not outsource to some financial advisor that really doesn't care about your success. I mean, I know some people do. Mm. I, that's a blanket. That's a pretty bold statement. But it's like they're not going to care as much as you do, nor should they, right, about your own success. And with something that important, I would say you have it. Not only should you, but you have a responsibility to your faith, to your spouse, mm-hmm. to your kids, to your health, to your life to become who you need to be with money. And when you do, the rest of your life will completely change. Wow. Thoughts? <laughs> if I could fall over right now, I probably would have. <laughs> that's pretty really awesome. That was, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty profound. So that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's that, right? And so. I mean, it's not like I don't look at and study my investments, but I don't really study it i don't really study the markets i don't really Mm -hmm. you know what i mean i i I let my guy do that okay let's keep this conversation going (laughs) so i mean i I was excited to have him in as a counselor for us in terms of the youtube (laughs) channel uh, and and hoping that our audience you know uh would want to hear you know a lot of now how do you feel now i'm like (laughs) chris speak into my life oh man (laughs) so Uh, how much do we owe you no (laughs) No, so so here's the thing that I see because I, I talk to a lot of people and about money, right? That's just just what we do, mm-hmm. and I we have a, a unique strategy, and and the thing that drives why I do what I do is because I realized, sadly, that if I were to go talk to most people, like you guys, pretty naturally conservative human beings, like from a financial perspective, from a like everything kind of perspective, mm-hmm. like your faith and all that stuff, and so. When, when we look at that, I would, and I, I don't want to like call you out, but like my guess is your money and your values and beliefs are not in alignment. And I find that to be with everybody. Mm-hmm. So like, and I'll, and I'll just give you an example. So I talk to people all the time and I say, okay, you're struggling with money. And they'll tell me their story. And I'll say, you're struggling with money. Why, why is that? And, and, and they'll tell me what they think. And here's what I do know. The human brain is only going to allow you to put 100% of effort into something that you believe with 100% certainty you'll be successful with. There's a great book, if everybody is, hasn't read it, it's called The Ant and the Elephant by Vincent Pacenti. He was an Olympic uh, downhill skier. Phenomenal little fable about the power of the subconscious mind. and It's literally a must read. And when you realize that, the, that we all are trying to just like white knuckle life, right? Like And just grit through it and just like consciously plow through like i need to do this and this and this and this and this but we all have our subconscious beliefs that are that that are self-limiting that are like that were pre-programmed in before you even know that they were there right Mm -hmm. and this happens and so i don't know if you know this but when you make a conscious decision there are four million neurons in your brain that are firing to help you kind of execute and and follow the task but did you know that your subconscious is 4 billion neurons? And so that's the equivalent hmm. of an ant being on top of an elephant thinking it's going to steer that elephant. <laughs> that's perspective <Man>. right there. <laughs> wow. Okay. And so I'm telling you, you got to read this book. It's pretty awesome. And so when you, when you realize this, and then it goes back to our, is your money in alignment with your values and beliefs? Our values and beliefs are everything, right? Yep. They're how we show up as a husband. And I'll just talk to you guys. Mm -hmm. They're how we show up as a husband. They're how we show up in our business. They're how we show up as a parent. They're how we donate to church and political causes. And they're why we make the decisions that we make. Are we going to, are we going to go buy a new car or an investment property right now? Well, it depends. What do I believe the rest of the world is going through right now? Is it worth it? Is it a good time? Is it this? Is it that? Mm -hmm. But here's the challenge. Most people I would talk to, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put you guys on the spot. Do you, how, how do you feel about like um, our national debt right now? It's how crazy, do you feel about crazy it? Crazy out of control. I, I just, 31 it, trillion dollars. How does yeah, that make you feel? It, not no. good. Okay, do you think it's gonna get better or worse? Worse. Okay, so subconsciously, you're internal. Can I convince you, right? You, 
you think it's going to be get worse and I, I feel this way so i'll just put it in your mouth <laughs> you feel like it's going to get worse just like the world is round right sure like me trying to convince you that the national debt is going to get better is like me trying to convince you the world is flat well you'd have to convince me that the uh leadership and the, the sure. politicians are okay. all of a sudden going to change course fair enough okay <laughs> so so that means yes yeah so 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 because i'm not going to be able to convince you of that so 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 you go okay national debt's going to go up do you know how much unfunded liabilities have you ever looked at us.org no okay. not recently it'll It'll give you anxiety. Don't do it. <laughs> the, we got over $170 trillion of unfunded liabilities in this country. Wow. Okay. Interest rates are going up. Do you know that every one percentage point, the federal funds rate goes up. It's an extra $300 billion a year just to service the debt. That doesn't surprise me at all. On our country. Yeah. That's three. They, they were freaking out about like $4 billion to build a wall. <laughs> yeah. Now, not to get political, but like, yeah, yeah. but just case in point that's four billion we're talking 300 billion dollars with no production value we might as well just light it on fire yep unbelievable that's where we're going so if i asked you how are they going to do this how are they going to pay for it what do you think i have no answer okay so that now now this is the exercise so that goes into your subconscious you don't know Mm -hmm. it's not going to work in your mind in your subconscious you don't believe it's going to work okay so now, and you don't have to give details, but I'll, I'll tell you most Americans now, and, and most Americans that I speak to that share your values and beliefs about that, that share my values and beliefs about that. I go to them and I say, well, what are you doing with your money? I, I got a job. I got a 401k. My company contributes. I save in an IRA. Yeah, well, I got a little bit of a, and, I got yeah. a, bit of a Roth. Investing I do, it in certain places. Right. Yeah. We hear the same. We see the same thing. We hear yeah. the same thing and oh. we see the same patterns on people's credit reports and it's the same pattern that we're seeing as a country right now yeah mm-hmm. it's scary so it's very scary and it doesn't really matter which side of the the aisle you're on no the, the pattern is it shouldn't it shouldn't but it is i think to chris's point it's this it's it is that is the problem that is the problem and 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 i would argue that we as people who have our values and beliefs we have the ability to control our results but you can't control the results in your life if you are playing the game the same way everybody else does you know Mm -hmm. like yeah okay and and so not only that is is like there's a huge savings issue in this country and i think what happens is the human brain's only going to allow you to put 100 percent of effort into something you believe with 100 percent certain you're going to be successful with right so if i look at the world and i go (laughs) that's not going to work I might as well just enjoy life right now while I can. Why save money? So honestly, when I look at it like that, I can't even blame people because when you look at the psychology behind it, it's like, of course that's what's happening. So what I was just going to say is like, Mm -hmm. it's really, it's kind of been ingrained in all of us because of this lack of, you know, life's too short. Yeah. Or just, just a lack of faith in the system in and of itself. It's disgusting. Like, so. Uh, this morning I was going through numbers and I'm putting together this presentation and for a keynote thing that I'm doing. And I, I look at, I look at, um, these, the statistics, this is going to blow your mind. So from, so the Dow Jones industrial average, I don't know what this has to do with what we were just talking about, <laughs> but it just came into my mind. The Dow Jones industrial average from 1929 to 1979. Do you know what the average rate of return, the actual rate of return annually, annualized. Over those 50 years. Over those 50 years. 4%. 4.04%, good call. Yeah. Do you know what the rate of inflation was during that period of time? Average. Eight, seven. 2.98. So, so what does that mean? If I put money oh, in an account, I'm only really earning, increasing but my, in my investment there. account, I'm only increasing my purchasing power by an average of 1% per year. Is that going to get you anywhere? No. So why do people That's believe? Crazy. So the thing is, the, the financial industry has taught people and convinced people to buy and hold, weather the ups and downs, give up control of your money, keep it there, let it grow, whether it just, the only, you don't lose if you don't take it out, right? Like, mm-hmm. it, just mm-hmm. let it go. And you got to keep it there until you're 59 there and a half. until you're 59 and a half, exactly. Um, and yeah, I'll get back to that. And so, the, so they do that. And so here's the deal. People have bought into that. Why? Because... I was born in 1980. 
right? From 1980 to 1999, do you know what the average rate of return was? 80 to 99. I would guess 7. 7, 8%. 14.32. Whoa. Inflation, 4.2. So when you break it down, if you invested in that time frame, you did pretty well. Mm. You know, your, your purchasing power increased by over 9%, 9.7%, right? So that's pretty good. From, and I'll just skip right to it, 2000 to today, we're back down below 2% range for purchasing power. And the worst part about it was over the last 20 years, we've had inflation, wage growth hasn't been nearly what it needs to be. The whole world is in a world of hurt right now, and there's no way around it. And that sounds gloomy, right? It sounds like there's not much hope, but the bottom line is like anybody can control their money. There's a reason 95% of people, and this is a sad thing, 95% of people are not on track or not able to maintain their standard of living when they retire right now. 95% of Americans. We have the most prosperous country in the history of this world. And somehow we've hit the place where five out of 100 people are able to maintain their standard of living and keep their dignity when they retire. That's crazy. That is crazy. That's disgusting. Yeah. Hmm. Unfortunately, like there's, you know, people go through and they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on college and they come out not knowing how to balance a checkbook, not knowing how basic credit works, not knowing all the things that you guys do, all the things that we do, right? And like these, these are the things that are like, they're teaching kids the periodic table of elements and they don't, they don't even know what a credit score is. Yeah. And that we see. That's criminal regularly. in my opinion. We see that very Unfortunately. regularly. Yep. And that's criminal in my mm-hmm. opinion, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I just look at this and I say, okay, let's go back to this. Is like, are you, are you, is your money in alignment with your values and beliefs? You made a comment like, no, you don't get access to your money until you're 59 and a half. Do you know that when you put money in a qualified account, first of all, do you know when qualified accounts were created? No. 1980. I'm the same age as 401ks. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. It's very cool. (laughs) So that means we have the first generation that's actually utilized these vehicles, right? Because we went for before we had uh, 401ks, which is what we call a defined contribution Mm -hmm. plan, right? We had defined benefit plans, pension systems. Companies would be responsible for that. Now, when you look at 80 to 99, that big boom Not in the market, so mm-hmm. why did that happen? And, and, and like when 401ks were created, were they good? The answer is yes, because the top marginal tax bracket back then was 70%. Now it's the lowest it's ever been. People freak out about taxes being high. Taxes have never been lower. Like hmm. from a long-term perspective, since the institution of the Federal Reserve in 1913, taxes have never been lower than they are right now. You know, it's a fun political thing to complain about, but that <laughs> there's the reality of it as well, right? And so when you look at this and you go, okay, taxes are at an all-time low, debt's at an all-time high, unfunded liabilities are at an all-time high, interest rates are going up, it's going to create stress on the tax base. Which, what, by the way, the mortgage interest rates, this is like a 20-year high. Yeah. And this is my 19th yeah. year in the business and it's the highest I've seen them. Yeah. So it, that's a reality yeah. for everybody out there listening and watching. Totally. And so when we look at this and we go, okay, if I, if I, let's talk about our beliefs and our money now. Like if I, if I say, what am I doing with my money? And I, and I ask you what you're doing with your money and, and you tell me I've got an IRA, I got a 401k, this and that. Well, what do you believe? I, I believe taxes are going up. So when you put your money in that account, you realize you're giving up control of it. You're putting it in a place that you can't touch. You're giving it to the government because the government has the ability to tax that money away from you. Not only are you taking market risk now, you have opportunity costs because you can't access that money if an opportunity comes. Like if the market goes through a downswing, you can't take that money out and buy real estate with it and take advantage of the upswing. You know what's interesting is I was actually watching one of your videos from like 2016 and you were talking about just this. Just, Just exactly what's going on right now. Principles don't change. Like this has been coming for a long time. Like... The, the one mistake that I made in my naivety when, as I've got, got into this business a while ago is that I massively underestimated the government's ability to manipulate stuff, right? 
underestimated. Through, yeah. Oh, I think I I, underestimated. Yeah, I, I think we all yeah. did. I underestimated their ability to, to manipulate and to mm-hmm. print money and you know to write policies to change. Well, even things. what's like, happening right now with the real out. estate market yeah. is has been engineered. Yeah. With interest rates, totally. you, know, you turn a, like mm-hmm. today the national rate average. So this is uh-huh. nationally across the U.S. Mm-hmm. The national rate average for a conventional. 30-year fixed mortgage today, mm-hmm. 7.37%. That's so gross. <laughs> I mean, it's. I say that. It's really not, though, from a long-term it's perspective. It's really not. It's, it's, it's our, really not. Our parents were looking at 12, 13, 14% my back grandpa, in the 80s. My grandfather bought his, uh, a house in 1981 for 19%. Yeah. You know, it happens. But, but, but that but, was also the last time inflation was at the level it is currently today. Sure. And we're not done. No, we're not done. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But that's, listen, yeah. it's like... There are a lot of people that want to like scare the crap out of people and tell you the sky is falling and this and that. Like mm-hmm. this is just a cycle. The mm-hmm. yeah, market is cyclical. Sure. It's not linear. It's we're, we go through this stuff. Now, what I will say is this cycle is probably going to be more substantially felt by people because sure. we've kind of avoided and sidestepped some of the other ones through policy for many years. And, well, eventually, and also yeah. rates have been so low for so long. Yes, I mean Interest that's absolutely almost, true. Yeah. And, and I just did a video on this. Ben Bernanke just won a, a, a Nobel Prize. Did you hear this? No. Uh, <laughs> he won a Nobel Prize for his research on how to avoid bank runs and and how to like bail companies out and avoid bank runs through printing money and monetary policy and all this stuff. So the crazy part is awesome. he wins a Nobel. <laughs> it's like you can't make this stuff <laughs> up. Like wow. he wins a Nobel Prize mm-hmm. for 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 his workings about how he avoided uh, a complete Great Depression in 2008 and nine, mm-hmm. right? So there's that. And then also his research helped them avoid the same thing happening in COVID, like with the pandemic, right? With all the money printing, when we printed $5 trillion mm-hmm. in two months, basically, right? Yeah, I and still so, don't see how that really helped. No, well, well so here's the deal. <laughs> Guy wins a Nobel Prize after that, but now... All of the reasons that we followed him are the reasons that we have inflation the way that we do and the the reasons that we're now having a new crisis. It's like the moral hazards or the unforeseen consequences that that are caused because of his prize winning strategies. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) It's like you can't you can't make this. It's like right out of a science fiction movie to me. But, you know, it at the end of the day, I just believe if. And, and, and what really drives me to do what I do and share the information that I share and, and coach people with the strategies that I do mm-hmm. is that there's no guarantee for success for any one of us in any way. I don't care if you're putting a 401k, mutual funds, stocks, real estate, business, whatever. There's no guarantee. There's no, no guarantees. What I challenge everybody to think about is that your money, and I think you guys will agree with it, your money is just a tool. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Money is just absolutely. A tool. So tools, like all tools, I already told you how bad I am with this stuff. You put a hammer in my hands. It's not good. <laughs> right. But when you want it, you want to be able to have access to and it. And when, I, and, but, but when I, when I want to learn how to do something, I'll learn how to work on my Jeep. I'll learn how to turn a wrench. Maybe the hammer's not the right thing, but I'll, I'll get a wrench going. I'll do some other things, whatever. I'll get a lift. I'll jack it up. It'll be good. It'll be fun. Right. Like, so that's that. I would argue with you that you have a responsibility as a human being to learn how to master that tool because it's going to have an overflow because you have a responsibility to get better with your faith, to be a better husband, to be a better parent, to be, you know, to do that. And whether you like it or not, one of my favorite quotes is just because the ostrich buries his head in the sand doesn't mean the lion's dinner plans have changed. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Yeah, (laughs) it's true. Think That's about true. it. Like retirement, your financial freedom, your desires financially, what you want your life to look like, that's the line that's coming after you. And and the bottom line is most people don't get there because they don't want to do what they have to do. They don't want to put put in the work. They don't want to put in the they time. They don't want to have to deal with they it. They don't want to grow to become who they need to be to get to where they want to be, right? And money is the biggest thing in your way, period. <laughs> Because without getting that right, you won't show up. I promise you, you will never feel like you're completely fulfilled and showing up in these other most important areas of your life if you don't get that right. That's phenomenal. So I want to get this back to to the the (laughs) social media YouTube thing. No, 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 no. Before we do. So would you tell somebody like me that I need to be my own financial guru, my own financial manager, educate myself to the best I can and 
make the decisions uh, I would directly? S- I would say at some point in time, if you hit a big enough level, then you can start outsourcing it. Um, okay. But like anything else, when I first started my YouTube channel, I edited all my own videos. I learned how to optimize all my own stuff. I did everything. Right. Because before I'm going to give money to somebody else or, or, or hire somebody to do something, I want to know the ins and outs of it mm-hmm. so I can't get taken advantage of most people, I'm sorry if you just want to hand it to somebody and make it their responsibility. So I was talking about like the financial, success? I was like. talking, I was talking about my, my investment portfolio, <laughs> okay. but, but it also does relate okay. to the YouTube channel because I mean, at this point yeah. we are doing all of the production but ourselves it, and, and I, I, I'm taking pride in that and I'm enjoying yeah. that process. Cause and I you're really like, good at it, Brian, because I feel like, <laughs> I mean, it's like anything I, I, you have to, I believe you should, work to master something you need to work to master mm-hmm. something before you can ultimately be successful at it mm-hmm. if you don't understand how the back end's working like in mortgage if we don't yeah. understand at all how the underwriting process works or how Tressa and, and Kim do their job really really well as our processors you can't ultimately be a, a great loan officer in my in my view so That's when true. it comes to our videos and this I feel like no I needed to learn how to I need to what's the right mic what's the right mixer totally. you know all and that. you guys by the way baller setup this is awesome this is great i love it i'm coming back <laughs> All the, right. um, anytime but here's the deal principles are absolute right like yeah. principles of success can't be shortcutted can't right. be sidestepped and so it doesn't matter if you're talking about your money or this like maybe the execution and the, the areas are different but the mm-hmm. principle of the fact that you better gain some level of mastery first now could you just say hey i'm gonna have my youtube channel i'm gonna outsource it. i'm gonna hire this company whatever Mm -hmm. sure you could try it's probably gonna fail a lot of people do it with ads agencies they just like oh i want to do ads like i i tell you i'll give this example this is and this is how i handle everything in my life like i want to do youtube ads i've done the organic thing we've done it it's been great and i'm like but it's not going to scale the way that i want to scale and so i'm like next natural step is youtube ads and so I had all these people hit me up to do ads agencies, whatever. And then I just said like, no, that's not gonna happen. And so then I went and I found the best of the best of the best. And I said, I don't wanna hire you. I wanna hire you to train my guy that I control how to do it. <laughs> that's good. Period. I want yeah. control, you know, and I wanna mm-hmm. learn it. And I'm taking time every month, every week, when that guy teaches my guy Clark, Clark goes through and he and I have a meeting every week and he updates me on, you know, I take, he spends 20 hours on it. I spend one hour on it and I learn it and he takes his knowledge. He's going to execute. And I learn to the level where I at least understand it. I can speak the lingo. If I had to hop in and do something, I could Mm -hmm. (laughs) pray to God. I don't have to, but like, (laughs) you know, like it is what it is, but like we control that. If I put it out here, I'm now once again, hoping that this company can get me to the promised land where I want to be. And that is not me taking the responsibility and accountability for the success and the level of success that I am after. Right. So I ask anybody, is your current level of action, activity, how you're showing up in life congruent with what you say you want in life? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, most people, the answer is no. I think he's just articulated why it is that I moved on from that company in Los Angeles that was helping me (laughs) do those studio produced videos and um, and we, you know, we talked about the live shorts were, were awesome and the most productive. Uh, we, yeah. But, I mean, we said the but whole But I felt time. like, I felt like I wasn't in control of the content and I wasn't, yeah. it, it was, it wasn't it, genuinely It really me wasn't him. And that, right. that was the, and that was the issue. Right. Yeah. And totally. I feel like that's the opportunity and this, we have yeah, And this, this is what we have consistently delivered is like this, this is us. This is genuinely yeah. us. Yeah. This is us. I love it. And it started one day it. when we just said, we just need to do this. Let's, let's just do, do it. Let's go and grab a couple it. of USB mics, no lighting. And that's it. No. <laughs> I, that's <laughs> awesome, no though. But hey, that's amazing. Please, please do watch it. You'll, you'll get a, yeah, a lot of good shot. I'm going to. I'm going to. You yeah. guys got to put it on the end screen. Guys, I'll, I'll never forget that. My, my opening like, Jay, this is this is momentous. This is. <laughs> yeah. We've been talking about doing this for a long time. I think we talked about that for like three minutes. The whole intro was, can you believe we're actually doing this? Over and over again. Oh, no, I can't believe this. This is like a monumentous occasion. This is unbelievable. That's awesome. Here we, we are. are. What, what do we say? What are we? Yeah. What are we going to talk about today? That's awesome. 
Well, you now know, you don't have to watch and, the video. And no, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go watch it now because next time you come over to the house, I'm gonna I'll, yeah, it'll be funny. I'm gonna even, play it on. I'm gonna put it up on the TV so when you walk in, that's what's gonna be on. Oh, oh okay. she had a mullet. The is terrible. Is that so, a buzz in the background? What is that? That's awesome. <laughs> so, like you know, at the end of the day, like I, I just it, it doesn't matter if we're talking about your money or your business or whatever. The principles are the principles are the principles, and and I would just argue that your money is one of the top four things in your life. Mm -hmm. And like all the other areas, you're not gonna be able to outsource your success. You need to become who you need to be to get to where you wanna go. That's a non-negotiable principle of success. It's kind of like saying you wanna build this business, but you're not gonna to have to grow. Like we are where we are because of who we are. That goes for me, for you, for every single person watching this video. You know, mm -hmm. everybody's at a different stage. There's zero judgment behind that statement, right? Yep, yep. Like it's just a it's reality. True. Like you look at Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is where he is because of who he is. You know, hmm. Tony Robbins, like people, he says this story from stage all the time. He's like, people come up to me all the time. He's like, you know what? I'm going to be worth a billionaire and I'm coming after you. I'm going to be doing all this stuff. I'm going to be right where you are in two years. And he's like, great. I'm going to be way past this by then. <laughs> I hope you are where I am because I'm going to be long gone, buddy. Like that's the mindset. That's great. It's you got to have a mindset of growth and abundance and you got to be committed yeah. to it. You got to be willing to do these things. And like, listen, like nobody's perfect. Like, and to put yourself out there, especially if totally. you're talking about YouTube and Spotify. Totally. I mean, you've got to get over the fear oh, of yourself 100%. and the camera sure. and the audio or whatever it is that yeah. you're afraid of. Totally. I mean, you guys are married. So, you know, go talk to my wife. She'll tell you I'm not perfect. She'll tell you I'm, <laughs> I don't get all this stuff down. I'm not like, no, I think that's the other thing. Everybody like holds them, like we whip ourselves, you know, yeah. like about not being perfect. And if, if like, it's like, oh, I didn't do it right. So I'm just going to stop. Or I didn't like mm -hmm. yep. if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly till you're good at it. Just keep going. Like mm -hmm. just because you failed, just because like, you know, you weren't going to drink that drink or you, you or, or you were, uh, you know, going to show up better for your kids that weekend and take them out. But you didn't take them out for a daddy daughter date or like you didn't do these things. And, and you know, and, and so now what are you going to do? Like, was it the right thing to do? Was it in alignment with where you wanted to go? Was it in alignment with who you wanted to be? Like just because you didn't do it then doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do. Just get back on the horse and keep going. Mm -hmm. Fail forward, you know, like, and don't, my, my wife and I always say this, don't shoot on yourselves, right? Like, <laughs> you should. don't shoot you should. on yourself, you know? And, mm -hmm. and, and that is what it is. Like, just, so just do the best you can. Under, give yourself some grace. But that's why my company is called Life 180. It's living intentionally for excellence. That's it. And the reason that I did that is because unfortunately, not enough people are living in So is the 180 like turning from turn, the old and, and turn, turn to around. the new? Most people are not getting okay. the results that they want in life, so turn around. turn around. Everybody has, listen, people way overestimate, and this is a big problem, people way overestimate what they can accomplish in a year, and they underestimate what they can accomplish in a decade. You have to think long term, you have to pick mm -hmm. a vision, you have to set goals. I, I just, I did this 30 video series I'm working on, it's not done. But I'm, that I'm gonna launch on the YouTube channel. And it's all about understanding your money. And the first video is the importance of setting financial goals. And it's so basic that it was pretty hard for me to like go back and like simplify it to that level. But in that process, you know, you start to realize like the importance of setting goals is because like Stephen Covey says in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, you gotta begin with the end of mind so you can reverse engineer a plan to get there. Mm -hmm. And you gotta connect with the why that that is important to you. like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yep. And for me, I can tell you, it's my wife, it's my kids, and it's my legacy. It's my significance. I have a significance drive. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Yep. I want to make a dent in this and universe. And you shouldn't be. I, you well, I, know? Think, I think every human does on some level, right? You want to you, you sure. have fulfillment and, and legacy and purpose. Yeah. Find, find importance. I mean, one of my favorite um, things that I tell my boys is every single person that you come across out there, not, not a single person that you meet, it doesn't matter, the car they're driving, the suit they're wearing, the size of their house, everybody on some level is struggling to find some level of significance or meaning or joy in life, mm -hmm. no matter what they appear to be. That's so true. To be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I am the least money motivated person you'll ever meet in your life. I do not care about money. Like, I mean, we all need money. Yeah. Yeah. But I care about my life. I care about my lifestyle. My wife and I made a conscious decision a long time ago that whatever we were going to do, it wasn't going to be about money. It was going to be about lifestyle. And if whatever we're doing 
on the money side, I mean, that's got to play into it. Money is an important tool, as we've talked about. It's one of the yeah. big four Fs, right? So like, while it's there, I, I'm, that's what wealth is about, is about having the money and the time freedom and the control so we can show up in life how we want to show up, right? Like, we all know, like uh, my buddy Caleb, uh, who's just this little whiz kid, not little whiz kid, he's 26 <laughs> now, but, but he's, um, he's brilliant, you know, and I, I've worked with him a bunch. He came up with this thing and I heard him say, it. I'm like, man, that's really good. I wish I came up with that. The, uh, <laughs> but he, he, he came up with this thing and I was watching his keynote at a NAFA conference and, and he says, Warren Buffett is worth how many billions of dollars? 80, 80 billion or what? At the time it was like $80 yeah. billion. Dollars. Warren Buffett's 91 years old. Who in this room would trade places with Warren Buffett right now? Would you trade places with Warren Buffett? No. Mm -mm. No. So what you just told me was that you value time over money. Period. I think any real honest person, some people might whimsically or flippantly say, yeah, I'd take the $90 billion or whatever. But I think if you really think about it, most people would say, no way. I'm 30 or I'm 40 years old. I got 50, 60 years ahead of me. I want to figure I'm this not out taking on my own. $90 yeah. billion dollars yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. So what you tell, what everybody, what most people, not everybody, but most people intrinsically in their gut, in their subconscious believe is that time is more valuable than money. So we understand that on a macro level, but on a micro level, how we show up every single day, we don't, we, we don't waste, show up that we, way. But we end we up waste wasting it. time. We waste despite it. that. That's Think about that. Yeah. Like it's that's troubling. It is. <laughs> it really is. Like how much time we really do waste is troubling. Yeah. Hmm. So such I a mean, good point. So it's 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 that stuff. But um, man, I don't like. I, I guess I, I guess you know at, in, in the interest like because I know you guys uh, do the mortgage stuff and and you're helping clients and you're helping mortgage people mm -hmm. and and just overall finances or whatever. But it's. It's very similar to what I do, and I, you know, it's just in a different, little bit of a different niche, right? And so, um, I would say, in in kind of going back to what I was saying before, is like how to be successful, like you know, it just what we were talking about at lunch. Find people who are on the path that you're on. Make sure what you're doing is is honest, authentic, congruent with who you are in life. Try to find people that are on that path. And then number two, add as much value to their life as possible and give without expectation of anything in return. And you have, and you can't fake that. Yeah. You have to do yeah. that genuinely. Um, and, and when you do that, you know, then you go out and you just try to compress their time frame of knowledge, right? Make their job easier. You have spent hundreds of hours, if not thousands and thousands of hours, right? I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. So how do we take our journey and compress it for other people to make it simple? Because they're probably not going to be as passionate and dedicated to it initially. Right. And then surround yourself with other people. And if, 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 if you approach your business with that framework in your mind, you can never fail. Like, so hmm. I just wish people would get behind that. That's so great. It's probably a good place to leave this. I, I mean, I know, I know. I don't want to leave. leave I don't want to leave the conversation. But this is this has been awesome, Chris, having you here. Oh, it's been great. Yeah, it's been fun. We'll really appreciate do it again. It. How can people find you? Yeah, you can just Life One Eighty on YouTube. Um, okay. Life One Eighty dot com. But if you search, just go to go to YouTube and type yeah, in that, Life One Eighty awesome. all That's one it. word. It, that it, it pops right up. Yeah, yeah. You, you subscribe. Can subscribe. Hit the it's bell, worth it. Get notified. It's fun. Like that's I, great, you know, really. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah. I like I love like. Hopefully, it just comes out. Like I just love this stuff. I could sit. I literally could sit here and talk to you guys about this stuff all day long. <laughs> so I like nothing fires me up more. Well, than we're gonna have you back, so like, yeah, we'll no, be able to do it again. It's it's fun, and so you know, like I just I really, I I I, I guess I'll end with this, and and I and I'll say it like this is. I. Believe that we're coming into unprecedented times, right? I'm not saying it's going to be, you know, apocalyptic or like horrible, but I think it's going to be very unique um, for people. It's going to be stuff we've never seen before. You know, it's mm -hmm. going to be an environment we've never seen before. doesn't mean there's not opportunity. You know, the people, people misunderstand challenging times for lack of opportunity. In fact, it's the opposite. I think Warren Buffett is the guy that said you can make money in bull markets, but you can make a fortune in bear markets. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. 
are you prepared? Are you, are you who you need to be to capitalize on it? Yeah. Right? Like, and, and so there's nothing more important that anybody can do right now like, than, than growing, investing in yourself, becoming who you need to be. Your, your need to create more revenue for yourself is gonna be based on who you are and your skill set. So invest in yourself, surround yourself with the right people, get in the right networks, get in the right groups, find the right opportunities. And you know, like when it comes to all this stuff, it's everything's going to flesh itself out. It'll all work it out. Will. It'll mm-hmm. all work mm-hmm. out. It always does. It always does. It always does. It, it may not comes like, around. I like it, how you said it earlier. It's not linear. It's it's cyclical. This is like yeah, listen. You know. If you look, if you look at the four year, four hundred year history of of the market cycles, it's boom bust, boom bust, boom bust, boom yep. bust, boom bust yep. every yep. eight to twelve years. This is just like go back. Look, here I am continuing the conversation. <laughs> yeah, I know. So go back, go back to two thousand eight, <laughs> right? Or COVID, right? Two thousand twenty. 2008, 2002, 2002 yep, was 2000, the, 2000 to 2002, mm-hmm. that range. 1994 was a recession. Yep. 1987 was Black Friday. 1979 was a recessionary time. 1972, 1966. 19, like, yeah. it's just, this is a cyclical thing. You know, like yeah. it happens. And yet people are somehow programmed to have short-term memories. And mm-hmm. so we only mm-hmm. remember a couple of years passed, you know, yeah. like sadly, a lot of people already forgot 2008, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people got hurt in 2008. A lot of people made a lot of money in 2008, yeah. 9, 10, 11, mm-hmm. 12. What you do, I would, I would encourage how you handle the next six to 18 months is going to have a huge impact in the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. And I'm not telling anybody what to do. Like I have my beliefs. I have what I do. Right. My encouragement for everybody watching this is make sure whatever you do, that it's in alignment with your values and beliefs, because then you're going to execute. You're going to emotionally connect with it. You're going to commit to it. You will have fun and enjoyment and growing to become who you need to be, right? Like if it's some out there thing that's not in alignment, you're going to hate it and you're never going to do it. So like make sure what you're doing is in alignment with your values and beliefs. Awesome. And you'll win. Well, Chris, thank you again so yeah, much. For, I, I mean, I hope we get to do this again. We will. You know, so way down the road. line. Uh, you know, just a quick shout out to our our listeners, our our early adopters who are listening to our our channel and watching it, it on on YouTube. We really, really appreciate you guys. Um, it really helps to uh, to like and and subscribe to our channel and definitely share it if you can. And that would be awesome. And amazing. And. Uh, Great spending time with you, Chris. I'll, I'll take this. I'll put it on my channel too, and push some guys your way. Oh, that'd, that'd be great. Fun. That'd be awesome. Awesome. Really appreciate it. Rock and roll. All awesome, right. Guys. Well, thanks, thanks, again, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yep. All right. Thank you. Got it.